Okay, Governor, thank you for being with thank us. Thank you. So my first question is, looking back on 2023, what's a favorite memory or a moment that really sticks with you? I think one of my favorite moments, uh, it was several moments really, when we went out, Fran and I did, we went to 15 schools uh, around the state and we talked to teachers and we talked to students where a school had switched over to the science of reading and to see the enthusiasm of those teachers um, and to hear what they had to say about teaching the science of reading and how much more effective it was than what they had been doing in the past. Um, I think probably the most impactful moment for Fran and me was there's a 16 year old young man and he told us, he said, they told me I couldn't read. Mm -hmm. And he said, and I couldn't read. And some people just told me, just, just you're not gonna read. He said, but I had a, a, a intervention specialist, a teacher uh, who used the science of reading and I can now read and my life has been changed. Wow. Wow. I mean, you know, that's, and that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get this available for every child in the state, no matter where you go to school. Let's use the best way to teach reading. And there is a, truly a science behind it. And now we know that this is the best way. As I, I compare everything to when I was a county prosecuting attorney, and we used to talk about juries, and we'd say, well, the jury is returned. Uh, the jury has a verdict. And in this case, in regard to education, uh, the jury is returned, the consensus clearly is that the science of reading is how kids learn how to read. So we started that last year. We're going to make, continue to make great progress this year. And that to me is exciting. This was one of my later questions, but you, when you bring up reading, you know, at three news, my station, we are huge sponsors and supporters of Cleveland reads, you know, going into schools and also making sure that kids read a certain amount of minutes a day. I've been lucky enough to be a part of this program. I mean, programs like this are so important to you. Yeah, like Cleveland Reads, uh, there's other local programs at different, different places in the state. Those are vitally important. Something my wife Fran is very, very involved in is the Dolly Parton Imagination Library. Mm -hmm. uh, free books to children zero to five in the mail. We now have close to 400,000 children in Ohio who are getting those books every single month. And, you know, it's all of these things coming together that, that truly makes a difference the future of our kids. It, you know, when you think about it, it's the key. I mean, if you cannot read, think of all the doors that are closed to you. Or even if you can't read very well, those doors are closed. This is the key to open those doors and everything else really kind of flows from your ability to read. It is almost the end of the year. I can't believe it. What are your top goals heading into 2024? Making the uh, science of reading available to every kid in the state. Uh, continuing to work to make sure that we remove every barrier that we can find for people to be able to live up to their full potential. So being able to read or not read is a barrier. Uh, mental health, people who have a mental health challenge and it's untreated, they can't get help, that can be a very big barrier for people. So we're working to, to remove that. Uh, we're continuing to push for economic development in the state. You know, we're, we're really moving forward. The state is red hot today. We're creating more jobs every day than we have people to fill them. So there's a, a lot of good things going on. Uh, I think also getting back to the education, making college available to kids who wanna go to college. Uh, this graduating class, 2024 graduating class is the first class that we'll have our our new scholarship, which is for the top 5% of the graduating seniors, they can go to any school as long as they go in Ohio to a public school or private school and get 5,000 a year for, for four years, that's $20,000. Make a big difference. But if kids go a different path, if they, go, if they go to a career center and they want to get into the trades or they want to do, you know, do welding or they want to do advanced manufacturing, um, we want them to have that opportunity too. So one of the things that Fran and I and the Lieutenant Governor as we traveled the state this past year found was that uh, these career tech schools, kids are, are thriving in them. They're excited when they're in there, but there's wait lists to get in now. Never had that in the past. Now we have wait lists. So we asked the legislature for money and they gave us $300 million to get, and we, we're sending that out now to these schools so they can expand the school, knock some walls down, hire some more teachers, 
and make sure that every child can live up to whatever his or her dream is and they're not locked out because there's a waiting list. When you think about 2024, is there anything Cleveland, Northeast Ohio centric that comes to mind? Well, we're going to continue to work uh, with the mayor uh, and with the police in regard to surging resources in there uh, to try to be of help in regard to violent crime. Uh, the, the, the truth is that uh, if you look at the whole universe of criminals, people who commit crimes, there's only a small group in there that commits the violent crimes. And so targeting them, going after them, getting them off the street uh, can be very effective. So we've done this several different times in Cleveland. We've brought in the, not only the highway patrol to back up the police, but we've also brought in the parole uh, people. Uh, there's always people in, in every community that are on parole, checking on them, making sure they don't have guns, making sure they're complying with the law, uh, bringing in our liquor control people. Uh, you know, there's limitations on having guns and things when you go into a, a liquor uh, place or a bar. Uh, again, these are things that we can do that will truly, truly make a difference. I, I think another thing that you're seeing in Cleveland today uh, is a recognition of the value uh, of the waterfront, uh, the, the value uh, in regard to the lakefront. And uh, we're seeing that all over Ohio. In fact, people are starting now to realize, hey, we've got this great asset out here, and it's great for tourism, it's great for the quality of life for people who live here, it's also great to, to spur economic development. So I think every city's kind of trying to figure it out. But I, you know, I'm watching now uh, Cleveland, and you know, we're seeing Cleveland try to figure that out. But I think it's, I think it's a very good thing uh, that that, is, that process is going on now. Speaking of crime, you know, last <clears throat> night in Cleveland, there were three shootings in an hour. Obviously, the state has intervened. You are doing these partnerships. When you hear stories like that, though, do you think, is it enough? Can we do more? What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, look, it's never enough. And we would like to do, we would like to do more. One of the things that we're looking at doing, frankly, um, is putting more resources into a unit that can come in and, and you know, where we can do this in three or four cities at the same time. Uh, the way it is now, we're pretty much, we go into one city and we can do it and then we have to go into another city and do it. But being able to have more depth to that and, and be able to back up the local police more. Uh, and one of the things that you know, is happening there is data that is, can be obtained today where you can really pinpoint. You can look at a map and say, OK, that's where this crime is really occurring. We need to go target that. You're seeing police departments do more than that. We can certainly assist them in that area. But you know, it's not all about law enforcement. Uh, you know, we're seeing more and more young kids who are, have guns and are being violent and are using those guns. Uh, you know, 12 years old, mm -hmm. and so again, there are things that we can do, and we know what they are. Uh, it's having more boys clubs, girls clubs. Uh, you know, we've invested in, in, in those. Tried to help the local communities you know, grow, grow those. It's giving kids alternatives. It's giving kids a sense of value. Uh, many times these children are growing up and they get their sense of value from the gang they belong to. It's just a problem. And so there are a lot of different things. There's no easy answer, but we have to, we have to stay at it because these are our kids uh, and our communities will be defined really uh, by how safe people are on the street. You know, businesses don't want to come. Uh, people don't want to go to a neighborhood where there's crime. And so we owe it to the people in those communities to do everything that we can to, to really lessen that violence. Do you think the city of Cleveland's doing enough? Look, I, I think the city is trying to do it. Um, you know, I see police officers up there every time I go up. I see people doing great work. Um, so it, but it's a, it's, a, it's a joint effort. We have to work, work with them. We have to give them the assistance. We're not allowed in Ohio. <clears throat> we don't have a state police. We, we, you know, we believe in local control. We believe in local police. We believe in local control. And that's the system that we, we have in Ohio. But we constantly look to see what else can we do you know, to, to be of assistance. And one of the areas is to have you know, more technology available, uh, to utilize the technology we have to go fight the crime. 
Let's talk about elections. Um, you know, Northeast Ohio saw a huge voter turnout in a lot of areas. What was your takeaway on how Ohioans voted? Well, this past year, of course, we had you know two big issues. Uh, one was had to do with with marijuana. Mm -hmm. One had to do with abortion. And you know we're wrestling right now with kind of the aftermath of the vote in regard to a marijuana. Uh, <clears throat> I respect people's vote. Fifty-seven percent of the people of the state of Ohio, fifty-seven percent of our citizens said, "Yeah, we want marijuana. We want people to be able to have recreational marijuana." Not where I was, but that's what they voted. Uh, but I don't think anybody voted it, to have the situation, intending to have the situation that we have today. And the law that was passed then basically means that we're not going to be able to legally sell marijuana in the state of Ohio. No one will be able to until about a year from now. So we got a kind of goofy situation, frankly, where you could, you know, you're allowed to have marijuana, you're allowed to use marijuana, you're allowed to grow marijuana, but you're not allowed to buy marijuana, and you can't, you couldn't buy the seeds to even grow the. The marijuana, so it's kind of a strange situation. And you know, why do I worry about it? I worry about it because you will see the growth of the black market, and we're already starting to see this. We saw it in New York State. They had a similar situation. They ended up with thousands, thousands, and thousands of kind of storefront places where people were buying marijuana. Most people probably thought it was legal to buy it, but there was no control. There, there was no. Uh, quality control so that people knew they weren't buying marijuana that had pesticides on it or was much more high uh, dosage than they thought they were buying. So we need, frankly, we need the, the House of Representatives uh, to come, when they come back in January to, to focus on this and let's see if we can, you know, come up with a bill uh, that allows us to, you know, uh, implement what the people wanted but do it in a responsible way. So the, when you're the, saying the, that it, you're saying like actually have storefronts here the, sooner or it, correct no, me if I'm wrong. No. So you're going to look, here's the, the question is, do you have storefronts that are illegal and we don't control them? Sure. Or do we do what the proponents of this initiative said we want? They said, well, we want to have marijuana that's controlled like liquor. Okay. Okay. And in liquor, we have liquor agents who will go out. We have people who can assure that there is, there is people, at least people are getting what they buy. Uh, we, unless we pass new legislation, we don't have the ability to do that with marijuana. In fact, we can't even approve marijuana based on the law that was passed probably for about 11 or 12 months. So that's just a crazy situation and we need to fix it. The other thing we need to fix is a problem that we've had for a while and I continue to urge uh, the legislature to take care of it and the Senate bill would have taken care of this. And that is what we call Delta 9. And this is this hemp derivative. Mm -hmm. And frankly, let's be honest, there's a loophole in the Ohio law, there's a loophole in the federal law that allows people legally to sell this junk and to sell it to young kids. We can't stop kids from going in and buying this stuff, even though we know that it's hallucinogenic. If they're driving and they get back in the car, they're gonna be high when they drive, if they're using it right away, um, just dangerous. So the legislature can give us the power uh, to put these people out of business and so they're not selling this junk to our kids. Abortion rights, here to stay. How do you feel about that? Well, look, I'm on the other side of that. I mean, I, I believe that, you know, life begins at conception. I think we have an obligation to protect the most vulnerable among us. That's not how people voted. I think one of the reasons they didn't vote, one of the reasons they voted the way they did is the option that they saw, which was a, a law that said that there was no exceptions for rape or incest. That's not where people are. 90, 95% of people in the state, uh, whatever they think about abortion, think that there should be a set exceptions for rape and incest. So their option w was for them not, not a good, good option. So where do we go from here? I, I think one of the things that is important, uh, I think is important, is that the guardrails that have been put in place in regard to abortion a number of years ago, uh, parental notification, for example, I have an abortion, have to, we have to involve the parent in this or the parents in, in this. Those should stay in place, and they are in place today in Ohio. So I, you know, I would urge uh, everyone to keep those guardrails in place uh, as, as we move forward. I think the other thing we have to do is much more affirmative, and that is to continue to work to make uh, life better uh, for 
women who, who are pregnant, maybe in a difficult circumstance, it's difficult circumstances that maybe they're in an abusive relationship, maybe they are um, because of their poverty, they can't get the help they need. So we have, over the years, since I've been governor, dramatically increased uh, the incidence of what we call the programs of home visiting. So somebody can go in and help uh, the woman get, th get through that, get her the medical care that she needs. Uh, these are all things that we have the ability to do. We just have to have the will, will to do it so that we put her in a situation that if she says, look, I would really like, like to deliver this child, that she'll be able to do that and feel more comfortable than maybe she has in the past. There was actually a case that's gaining national attention in Northeast Ohio. I'm not sure if you're familiar with it, but it was a woman, I believe she was 22 weeks pregnant from Warren, uh, ended up, was told that, you know, the baby's heartbeat was no longer there and the pregnancy just wasn't going to continue. I, I believe, allegedly, she, you know, delivered the baby in a toilet and she is now being charged with a felony. Some are saying that this could be a dangerous precedent. What is your reaction to that? Well, first of all, I don't think it's a precedent. Uh, I don't know all the facts. So I'm, it's always, you know, you have to qualify whatever you say. But from what I have read and, and the news accounts that I've heard, uh, the prosecution makes no sense. It's not what we should be doing. Um, you know, that's not what we should be doing at all. Fair. Um, let's talk about economic development. Ohio saw a lot of it. I mean, Amazon, Intel, why Ohio? Why is Ohio so great? Why are these companies coming here? You know, people have discovered Ohio. Uh, Ohio's red hot, and we're going to stay. We're going to stay red hot uh, as long as we can keep our water good, uh, as long as we can have a trained workforce, uh, as long as we are, are smart about how we manage things. Ohio is going to continue to stay on a roll. I mean, look at it this way: What do we have in Ohio? We have an abundance of water. We take it for granted. We don't think a thing about it. But we got. We got a all the water, uh, frankly, that we can use. We just need to keep it clean. We need to keep Lake Erie, uh, you know, algae bloom problem under control, and we're, we certainly will continue to work on that. Um, we have power. Uh, we have that. We have taxes that are, that are reasonable. Our location, think about our location. You know, within a day's drive of Cleveland, Ohio, you've got, what, 60% of the population of the United States, probably 60% of the population, at least, of Canada. So the location is great. Uh, we've got to keep up our infrastructure. We've reinvested in our infrastructure. Um, so a lot, of, a lot of good things. I mean, I love it when we get companies coming from California. I just love it. They're coming, and they're coming to Ohio. Uh, we had an announcement uh, for, the, for the Dayton area uh, a few months ago, a company called Joby. And uh, Joby is, uh, what, what do they make? Well, they, they come from, company from California, but they make these flying taxis. I mean, this is, a, this is about, this is about, uh, the future, but it's important to keep our uh, our base companies too. I mean, look at Sherwin Williams. Go downtown, look up in the air. Sherwin Williams is said we're staying, and uh, we're not only staying, but we're we're building a research center uh, in Cuyahoga County, and we're also building uh, a, a new headquarters. So, you know, again, people have have confidence in in where we are. I think the fact that we got intel sent a signal to a lot of people, oh, we better look at Ohio. Maybe they got something we don't know about. And people are looking to Ohio. Of course, Sean Williams of note when you think of Cleveland. But some could say Columbus is getting a lot, Dayton's getting a lot. What about Cleveland? Are we forgotten? What's your response no, to that? No, look, I mean, Cle Cleveland, there's a lot of good things getting going on in Cleveland. I think one of the challenges that we face is that we're Ohioans and we don't brag a lot. I mean, look at the quality of life uh, that you can have in Cleveland, Ohio. Some of the finest arts in the world, fine theater district, uh, big league sports, uh, art galleries, great restaurants, and vibrant, you know, vibrant, uh, vibrant communities. So are there things that we can improve? Sure, there always are. But you're going to see us move forward and you know, some people looked and said, well, what about the rest of the state in regard to Intel? Uh, I looked the other day, in fact, I looked yesterday, and Intel has now uh, brought to Ohio, they've doubled the number of Ohio uh, contractors that are supplying them, their suppliers. 
They've doubled that since, oh. just since the, the announcement. They said they were going to do it, and now, now they have. And you're going, you're going to see that continue to go out to different, to different communities all over the state. How could Cleveland be better? Look, I, I think that one of the things that's always important is for communities to work together, come together, figure out what they want. Uh, when I was Lieutenant Governor under George Voinovich, one of the things George always said is, whether it was Cleveland or Cincinnati or wherever it was, he says, you know, community has to come together. Figure out what you want. You gotta know what you want before you're gonna be able to get it. And, and, and look, I'm seeing something in Cleveland right now. There's a lot of discussion going on uh, in regard to the lakefront. What a great asset. I mean, think about that. And, and Clevelanders coming together and figuring out, okay, how's the best usage of, of our, of our you know, waterfront there uh, for recreation, but also maybe to develop it, to do all kinds of other things that are, that are possible, but it's an asset, and, and, and playing on that asset is very important. You know, we're hearing about a historic tax credits from the state to help Cleveland actually revitalize areas, speaking of the lakefront. Uh, what can you tell us about those credits, if anything? Look, we are being as aggressive as, as we can uh, as far as tax credits. Uh, one of the tax credits that I think is very, very helpful in the state, and we've increased those. We probably, uh, we do need to increase them more, I think, in the next, in the next budget. But that's historic tax credits. Uh, that's where, you know, you can take some legacy cities like Cleveland. Uh, there's great buildings in here, uh, in there, but sometimes economically it doesn't work to fix them up. But the tax credit enables you to do it. And the multiplier effect is huge, and, and you end up getting more tax revenue anyway. Uh, you, you, don't, you don't lose anything, you gain something, and then it gives vibrancy to the community. So that type of tax credit, historic tax credit is one, are things that we can continue to do, and it's gonna make a big difference. Just a few more questions. Um, when you think about, as governor, you obviously think about all these cities. Which city are you most worried about when it comes to crime? Is there one that sticks out? No. Uh, our cities have a problem with crime. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, you know it, it is, all you have to do is watch your news at night, watch your news during the day, and you're gonna see, you're gonna see crime, but you're gonna see that in every city. Now, sometimes I think we think it's uh, maybe worse than it is, but it's bad, and we have to continue, I think, to really focus on this. We will bring in help from the state. We will surge in when the city wants us to do it. We will continue to do that. Second, we have to, again, help these young people, particularly the, these, these, ki these kids, and we're seeing younger and younger kids with guns and committing crime. We gotta give them alternatives to those gangs. I mean, we have to give them more hope. A lot of it's about hope. Uh, people don't have hope and, they, and they, they turn to gangs. That's the only way that they can feel a sense of worth. We have to do everything we can so these kids feel a greater sense of worth and value. Uh, and it's one kid at a time. It's boys clubs, girls clubs, it is good schools, it's good mentors. You know, we know what those ingredients are. We just have to continue really to focus on them and do more. And partnering with Cleveland and, and cities is important, of course. Look, ab absolutely. Uh, if, if you look at every region of the state and you define that region, Northeast Ohio, uh, you have to first start with the core city. You have to first start with that city. And you know, if, you're, if you're losing things in that city, then the whole region hurts. The uh, train derailment in East Palestine, we're coming up on a year in February. Uh, what are your thoughts about the progress being done there? I know that many residents still express that they are scared for the long term. Uh, I think uh, they are doing well. Um, I understand, you know, the biggest concern that's expressed to me by people in East Palestine is they're concerned about their kids' mm -hmm. health in the long run. It's the unknown that is there. So we have, we're now subsidizing, uh, the state is subsidizing uh, a clinic uh, that is in East Palestine. People can go there right in the, right in the village, uh, get the health care that, that they need. We're going to continue, and we've pledged we're going to continue to stay there and monitor the water. We're going to continue to stay there and monitor the air. 
Uh, we're seeing, I, Fran and I were there uh, about two weeks ago. We saw the new plant where uh, the water treatment plant, they now have the ability, uh, they, got, they got some money from the railroad, they, got, they have the ability now to uh, take out PFAS. If it, you know, most, many cities don't have the ability now to do that. So we're seeing movement. Uh, the announcement that we made today uh, was over $3 million, I think it was $3.3 .3 million uh, in loans, but they're forgivable loans uh, that we are making uh, from the state of Ohio to businesses in East Palestine. Uh, because in the, in the long run, they have to have prosperity. They have to have businesses. They have, people have to have a place to work. Um, and so, again, looking at the businesses, the small businesses that are there that have been hurt but are still vibrant and can still make it, trying to give them the help that they need, I think, is very, very, very important. Let's wrap this up with something a little happier, okay? So Christmas Eve, you have how many people coming? How many grandkids and kids? Eight kids? Yeah, well, well we have eight children, and we, and we have 27 grandchildren. And then, you know, a lot of them, of course, have spouses. And then they have, uh, you know, for the grandkids, some of them have boyfriends, some of them have girlfriends. So in that room out right across here, we'll probably have about 40, 40 people. And um, so we'll, we'll start off. Uh, Fran always, always gets a country ham, slices it real thin, uh, <laughs> makes make little little short biscuits that come out of the oven and the kids are eating that as, as kind of the appetizers and then when we get to the dinner one of the things the kids really love from their grandmother uh, is, is hot rolls so she's got hot rolls. great rolls that, that come out and uh, you'll hear these kids say well I've eaten five I've eaten six no wonder I don't get one so, yeah. <laughs> what's That's your favorite funny. meal that she makes favorite or favorite dish uh, I think my favorite favorite dish uh, is, is probably uh, chicken pie. Oh, chicken uh, pie. Yeah, chicken pot pie. Uh, yeah, that's really, uh, really good. Or chicken and biscuits, that's e equally good. Throw in the rolls along with that and some peas and, you know, you have to have something that's green, of course. But, uh, yeah, she's a great cook. We know that. Clearly you're a very busy man, but is there a holiday movie that you love? Oh, you know, I think we've all seen all the, all the holiday movies so many times. I'm not, I'm not sure, uh, but I think, I think the one that uh, the whole family can enjoy is, uh, is you know, the kids' Home Alone. Uh, you Good know, one. one of the versions of it, and sure. uh, it, it's just kind of, kind of cute and funny, and we can kind of relate to it. And lastly, is there a, a holiday tradition that you love that your family enjoys every year? Well, I think it's just getting, you know, getting together, uh, be, being together. We actually, our celebration in the DeWine family has always been, a big celebration has been on, on Christmas Eve. So we'll start here about 11 o'clock in the morning and uh, start, start, as I said, with the, with the ham, the country ham and the biscuits, and then we'll just keep going and then move into the, move into the, into the presents. And uh, yeah, it's good, it's good to be together. Lastly, is there a message that you have to Ohioans as we enter in a new year to 2024? Well, I wish everybody, uh, you know, a blessed new year. Um, this is Ohio's time in history. It really, really is. Things are moving our way. We have to continue to get things right. We have to do smart things. Uh, but, you know, my goal, my wish for every Ohioan is that they do, in fact, have the ability to live up to their full potential. And my commitment is we're going to do everything in this next year to, to make sure that more and more people can live up to that, to that potential. Uh, this is a great state. There's no better place to live or raise a family, no better place to start a business. We just have to remind ourselves of that and, uh, and keep moving forward. Um, I asked you, you know, about your most memorable moments, but can you give me, what was a, is there a low for this year and a high? Can we end on that? Was there a low and a high? Can think of. Well, if you're governor, I think there's always lows. Sure. Uh, you know, I, I went last week to servicemen's uh, calling hours who, who died in the Osprey accident. Mm -hmm. We had one member from Ohio. Mm -hmm. uh, I think talking to the family of the little boy in Springfield who was killed uh, in, the, in, the, in the bus wreck. Uh, just a couple of weeks ago, a few weeks ago, uh, you know, we saw another wreck of, a, of a, a band that was in a school band that was in a chartered bus, and we had a number of people killed. And so going to talking to, you know, the moms and the dads, yeah, that's, uh, 
doesn't get much worse than that for that family. I mean, it's, it's the parent's worst nightmare. They lost a child. They had no idea they were going to lose. They had no, no warning at all. And then that child is, you know, the most important thing you have in your life is now, is now gone. So, yeah, those are tough. And what's the high? Let's end on the high. Yeah, the, look, the, the high is just seeing young people who are excited about what they're doing. It's being in a career center where, uh, you know, young lady, 16-year-old, 17-year-old, she's under a car, and you ask her, you know, how do you decide that this is what you want to do? She says, well, she says, I love it. She said, I love it. I already have a job. I haven't graduated. I got a good job, and I just like what I'm doing. That is what we want, kids to be excited about something and, and love what they're doing. And they are our future. They are our future, our whole future.